Thank you, Madam President. I, I come to the floor today uh, with a number of my colleagues on this 26th day of this deeply damaging and completely unnecessary Trump shutdown. We are here today to lift up the voices and stories of the people who are being hurt by President Trump and his Senate Republican allies, and to once again call on Republican leaders here in the Senate to finally allow a vote and work with us to end this manufactured crisis. Because while President Trump is very focused on his political game, actual people, their families, their communities are paying the price. People we represent, moms and dads, workers, small business owners, people who did not do anything wrong, who just want to do work, do their jobs, serve their communities, all of them have been pulled into President Trump's chaos and dysfunction, and it needs to end. So, Madam President, I'm very proud to kick off another effort here in the Senate by those who want to make sure that President Trump and Senate Republican leaders don't forget who this is about and understand who is being impacted by their refusal to act. And I want to start with a view from my home state of Washington, where there are nearly 13,000 workers who've been caught up in this Trump shutdown. Lauren, a furloughed FAA employee who shared her story with me through my website, and she told me she supports her family with one income, and now that paycheck has been frozen. She said she's been losing sleep trying to figure out how to cut her own expenses and pay her bills since the federal government isn't meeting its obligation and paying her. I heard from Adam, also from my home state, who's buying his first home with his fiance. What should be a very exciting time is now filled with unnecessary stress because federal loans through USDA and FHA are held up. As if closing a home isn't stressful enough, now they don't know when or even if a loan is gonna come through. And as Adam described to me, home buyers are now caught in the middle, and that is just wrong. Madam President, one federal employee I met with while I was home last week is a scientist at one of the impacted agencies, and he told me about the stress that he and his family have endured since the start of the shutdown, having to cover their childcare expenses and mortgage while he's not being paid, expenses that total up to $1,700 each month. Right now, he said he's able to tap into his family's emergency fund to make end meet, but he doesn't think they can hang on much longer. And I'm not the only one, by the way, who's hearing from people in Washington State about how President Trump's unnecessary shutdown is impacting their lives. These stories are everywhere. Earlier this week, the wife of a furloughed TSA employee with a six-year-old daughter told the Seattle Times about how the shutdown has thrown her family into an economic tailspin. Their family is currently living off of money she makes from babysitting and with the help from her retired father, who has taken now a minimum wage job to help with the family's finances. And she worries how they're ever gonna make it if this shutdown stays happening. Madam President, this is just a small number of the countless stories coming out of my state and from around the country about how President Trump's reckless government shutdown is hurting real people. There are people in every one of our states in the country. There are people on every side of the, side of the border debate. There are people who heard President Trump say he would be, quote, proud to shut down the government. They are people who simply do not understand why they are being asked to bear the burden to pay the price because President Trump and Republican leaders here in the Senate have boxed themselves into a political corner. And they are people who are getting angrier and angrier, more and more desperate with every day that goes by, and who are going to make their voices heard and fighting by, and we're gonna make their voices heard. We are fighting by their side to end this shutdown. So Madam President, I'm gonna keep making sure they have a voice in the United States Senate. I'm proud to be with a number of my Democratic colleagues today. We are going to lift up their stories until President Trump and Republicans here in the Senate agree to end this crisis they started. Thank you, I yield the floor.